Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Tech Tips. Now this is kind of indirect, if you saw the title, this is an interesting topic. Basically what I'm saying is, don't tumble your tanks. Now this may seem a little bit strange because if you go back in our videos, I think Kevin, we've done one or two videos about tumbling. And in, in one of the videos, I think I actually explained how tumbling occurs. But in this particular video, I'm saying, don't tumble your tanks. Now that's a general statement. Of course, there is a place for tumbling in the care of tanks, but in my opinion, <clears throat> uh, the, the place for tumbling of your tanks is not in your basement or in your garage. It's at the professional dive store. Let me explain. First of all, let's talk about tumbling for just a minute. Tumbling, as it's called, and that's the proper term for it, it's actually called tumbling, technically. Tumbling of a tank is a very simple process in which you put some gritty material. Usually aluminum oxide is a very, very hard material, like very coarse sand. And you put a bit of that inside the tank. And you put a little bit of water with that to make it a bit of a slurry. It's sort of like a very crunchy chili. Very crunchy chili. <laughs> And then you put a, just a drop or two of soap. Now the soap is not in there to make it smell good or to make it bubbly. The soap is in there to break down the surface tension. That's what soap does. I'm not sure if you know that. The soap doesn't actually clean your hands. It's water that cleans them. But the soap breaks down the surface tension. So the grit can get to the metal on the inside of the tank and, and, uh, and do what it's supposed to do. And then you take this tank with the, with the aluminum oxide, water, and a touch of soap in, and you put it onto a tumbler. Does that make sense to you guys? You, you know, tumbling, you put it on a tumbler, yeah. And the tumbler, it does it, just as it describes it, it tumbles the tank, around, 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 on and on like this. And that, that could go anywhere from 10 minutes to a couple of hours. I've actually seen, in some cases, the tank tumbled overnight, <coughs> which uh, there had to be a very special reason for that. We'll talk about that in just a second. Anyway, so that's what tumbling is all about. And, and the reason for tumbling, obviously the inside of the tank has something on it. It's dirty, or it's corroded, or it has some kind of a coating on there that the dive shop has decided should be removed in order for that tank to be safe and to continue doing what it's supposed to do, giving you air for scuba diving safely. And so part of the process of making the tank safe to dive, it may be necessary to tumble. Now that's a decision that really should be made by the dive store. Now let's get into why you should not tumble. Well, maybe I should finish tumbling first. Come on, Kevin, take a look over here. Because this is essentially, and I'm sorry, I forget the, the gentleman's name who asked me, how do I build a tumbler? If you're watching, if you see this, uh, forgive me for that. But anyway, <clears throat> these are the kind, this is about what I told him. First of all, this is a tank. You all recognize that, you're divers, right? You can buy tumblers. You can buy a really good tumbler for about $1,000. You can buy a not so good tumbler for about <clears throat> four or $500. But you can also build one. If you're, if you're mechanically inclined and you have some bits and pieces around and want to build one yourself for, you know, for your own reasons, there's a lot of satisfaction in building your own stuff, trust me. Uh, uh, and you can build your own. Whether or not you're going to save a whole lot of money, not so sure. Essentially, a tumbler <clears throat> is two plates like this, one there and one there, one at each end, you see? <clears throat> and, and between the plates, there are two rollers, two minimum, you have to have two minimum. You could have three, this has three, you see, one, two, three. You could have four, five, six, seven, you can have as many as you want. <clears throat> but uh, for, for tumbling, if you're just a diver in particular, and, uh, and you're just tumbling your own tank, <clears throat> or a small dive store just tumbling a few tanks in a whole year, uh, you know, two rollers is all that's needed. This roller in the middle <clears throat> is, 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 a, is a drive roller, I'll come back to that. This roller doesn't do anything, it just sits there, you see? This just has rubber, <clears throat> I don't know what these are, boat bumpers on it. Uh, you can use anything. I've seen one chap used hockey pucks. <laughs> he very carefully drilled the holes through and had a series of hockey pucks. There's another way to do that, which I'll show you in just a minute. So you have one, one of these rods between your two plates that is free spinning, and the other rod is driven. Now, what do I mean by driven? Well, what I mean is <clears throat> you should really mount this steel rod in, in a bushing, if possible. Not absolutely necessary. A nice ball bearing is the best, but just a plain bronze bushing would be good at one end there. And over here, another bushing. So this, this thing is, is driven. And that rod goes right through. I know, can you get over here, Kevin, to talk? Can you see? And it connects to a motor. Here's an electric motor over here. Now, this electric motor has a, uh, that, uh, has a speed of 1750. 
1750. I can't see it on there, but I know that's what it is. 99% of these are. The occasional one is faster, but usually these are 1750. What I mean by that is, that is revolutions per minute. Usually 1750 revolutions per minute. Now, <clears throat> if this roller tumbling the tank that's placed on here spins at 1750 rotations per minute, the tank's going to go very, very fast. Not only is it not safe, <clears throat> the grit doesn't have time to actually touch the metal and do the job. So it has to be slowed down somewhat. There are two ways to do that. The expensive way is with a really nice speed reducer. It's, it's a couple of gears in here. So the motor is connected to a large gear and then <clears throat> all the way around, <laughs> a small gear. And then there's another gear in there, a larger gear uh, that connects to this rod. So the motor spins quickly, but the larger gear goes slowly. So this rod turns very slowly. So the motor spins, and it's spinning very quickly, but this is turning quite slowly, okay? And again, this rubber roller on here can be made of anything as well. So, so far we have a free spinning uh, rubbery roller on a rod, and we have a driven rubbing, uh, rubber, rubber roller on a rod, try that fast, driven by a motor, just that simple. So how do you tumble? Well, after you get your tumbling material inside, then you put your tank on. Let me turn this off for a minute and put the tank sitting between those two. And this will help you to determine the spacing. You put the tank in like that. Now can we turn it back and see? There you go, tank tumbling. Tank tumbling 101. Just that easy. Now if you can picture inside the tank, not quite halfway up, is aluminum oxide grit, full length, water, full length, and about halfway up, <coughs> and uh, touches, touches soap. Now you'll need to, you don't want to leave the valve in there, so you put a rubber plug in this end. And you need to have the water come about halfway up <coughs> so that the end, both ends, also get tumbled, if you like, scraped or, or cleaned on both ends. And that's just it. How long do you leave it on? Well, that depends on so many things. And that's where the professional die store operator, his, his expertise, his, his training come in. He can look at it and say, well, it's not too serious or it's very, and decide how long you'll tumble it for. It may just be for a few minutes. It was a very, very light coating, what we would call surface or flash rust, 10 minutes. If it's more serious, and, and on it goes. So that's that's where all of it comes in. But that is a roller, that, that's a tumbler. Now, I did mention to the chap, uh, when I sent out the information that rather than this display, you can also use uh, um, casters. You can go anywhere. Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight, Prince's Auto, Home Depot, and go to the caster department. You know what casters are. They're wheels that go on the bottom of cabinets so you can move them around. They just rubber wheels like these. Oh, look, 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 Kev. Four rubber wheels. Look at that. That's pretty neat. So what you can do, you can use casters. Use a little bit of ingenuity. Get some casters, hook up a motor with a rubber roller to spin. So rather than having this long uh, device like this, you can just have a couple of nice big casters. Anyway, guys, that is uh, how a tumbler works and, and gives you some ideas uh, on, on, on how it's possible to build your own tumbler. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Don't tumble your tanks, all right? <clears throat> so what am I getting at? Well, first of all, if you tumble the tanks too long, you can damage the tank, particularly if it's an aluminum tank. Aluminum metal itself, <clears throat> or the aluminum oxide, which is incredibly hard uh, uh, material, the aluminum itself can actually, you can actually take off too much metal. And you actually make the metal tank, the tank wall thinner than it's supposed to be. If it's a steel tank, it's not as likely you get dangerously thin uh, unless you've tumbled it for a very, very long time, but it is possible. That's the first thing. Secondly, uh, um, oh, you got an inside there to show us one? Yeah. There's the end of an aluminum tank. You see it's quite thick. The wall on here is, it's not a half an inch, but it's getting close to it. That's, that's an okay, and there's a steel tank. You see the difference? The steel tank is very, very thin. The steel tank <coughs> wall is, um, let me think here for a minute, that's not a quarter. That's got a good three sixteenths. This is um, not quite a half. Big, big difference. But the steel is so much harder than the aluminum that uh, even if it tumbled for quite a while, uh, it, it's not likely to thin the wall of a steel tank very much. This, by the way, that you see in there is what we call surface or flash rust. If you look at this is a steel tank, so you get rust on it. But you look in there, it's, it's, it's smooth. You see, very, very thin. 
if this tank needed to be tumbled, 10 minutes. It would take all that off of there. You'd have a beautiful, clean, clear uh, uh, steel surface onto which you could then put some anti-rust and then get it sealed up tightly, make sure it's dry and clean, and off you go. So that's uh, some of the information there that you might need. But it's not a smart idea to tumble your tanks if you don't need to. Then you take your tank into the dive store. The dive store for its, for its service. It needs a visual every year, as you all know. And it needs a hydrostatic test every five years, as you all know. Generally, if it's a five-year service, the, uh, the, the uh, dive store owner will take the tank for a hydro first. Do the hydro test first. He may... He may, in the interest of, of, of your own pocketbook, he may do a quick visual first to see if there's anything in there, which might indicate to him that the tank won't pass the visual. If it, if it may not pass the visual, there's no point taking it for a hydro. There's no point spending 25 or 30 dollars of your money to take it for a hydro test if it's going to fail visual. You follow that? So a, a decent, intelligent dive store owner will, will take a quick look first, a quick visual. And if it looks like it's decent, then he'll do the hydro test. The hydro test only does one thing. All it does is test the elasticity of the metal. It doesn't say the tank is safe or not safe. It just makes sure that the metal is still elastic. So it can still be filled you know, a, a number of times. Then after the hydro test is done and the tank metal is proven to be uh, okay, then he'll do the visual and determine if there's anything inside there that's a problem, either corrosion or rust or a lot of aluminum oxide perhaps in there that will flake off or other pits in, in the steel. I've had that happen many, many times. I had a tank myself a number of years ago, a steel tank, and it passed hydro, stamped. Oh, okay, then they did a visual, <laughs> sure, down the bottom of the tank they found some pits, deep, deep pits and the tank failed hydro, or failed visual. So, so that's the process. However, as far as the tumbling goes, we should try to avoid it. There's no good reason to tumble, uh, unless it's again a mild case of rust, maybe take that off, or if it's fairly, uh, if there are some other corrosion. If the corrosion in a steel tank in particular is fairly deep, you can tumble it all you want. The tank will still fail because you cannot you cannot take the entire interior of the tank down to the level of the corrosion. If you have corrosion that might be uh, a thirty-second of an inch thick, deep, in a tank that is only, um, we say that was less than a quarter of an inch, the entire interior of the tank has to be taken down to the level of, of a deep pit. It's just not going to happen. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, first of all, some of you guys out there that are really handy, if you're thinking of making your own tumbler, tumbler to tumble your own tanks, not necessarily a bad idea, but be very, very careful that instead of tumbling and cleaning and making your tanks safe to use, you don't destroy them. Be very careful. Let the professionals at the dive store, they don't charge very much. I think a tumbling is 25 or 30 bucks. It costs you 10 times that to make a tumbler, and then they charge 25 or 30 bucks for the hydro and $10 for the visual and maybe a little bit for the air and so on. You get all the way through. It's 50 60 $70 once every five years. And let the dive store professional do it. That way there's a problem. It's not your problem. Anyway, just a thought. Think about that. You've seen a little bit about tumbling, learned a little bit more about tumbling and how it's done and why you should or should not do it. If you have any questions, let us know, and I'll be able to elaborate. Nice long email message. <laughs> All right, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Talk to you soon.